Greetings, men and women from north, south, east, and west. Hi, I'm back, and thank you for joining my Christian channel, Apple Tree. Today we are discussing that doesn't make sense. Let us pray for understanding of today's Bible study. Lord, thank you for this time to come to you. Lord, please open up our minds and hearts to receive and understand the Bible. Open our eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. Give us understanding so that we can desire to know you better. And let your Holy Spirit guide us into the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. That doesn't make sense. How many of you have gone through some things in life, trials and tribulations, in the midst of you serving our God, and you think, why is this happening to me? This is not making sense. I don't understand, God. Why? That doesn't make sense. Let's start off in the book of Romans. Okay, and let me just introduce you to my new Bible that I will be using in my Bible studies. This is a gift uh, from my mother um, for my birthday. She gave me this Life Application Study Bible. It's the NIV, the New International Version. I absolutely love it. It has a lot of cross-references along with these beautiful golden tabs to each book, so it's easier to find. And we're going to start today, this is my reference Bible, so if you do not have a reference Bible, you can always uh, use Google as reference to scriptures in the King James Version for better understanding. So when you are in your own private, personal Bible study time, you, um, you want to pray for understanding like we just did. You not only want to read God's Word, you want to study it. It is spiritual food for your spirit, and you want to apply application is very important in Bible study. So what God leads you to read and study, don't forget to apply what you've lived and learned. Well, well, what you <laughs> lived and learned, what you are learning, don't forget to apply that to your life. Okay. So that doesn't make sense. We're talking about things today that just does not make sense in our life that we are living. So we're going to start in Romans. Turn to your book of Romans. Um, and it's Romans chapter 9 that we are going to read from. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. That doesn't make sense. Why is this happening to me? Why doesn't this happen to them? Why me, God? It doesn't make sense. Romans chapter 9, verse 15. It says here, look at all these beautiful cross-reference scriptures to support other scriptures. I love this Bible. It's a study Bible. Get you one. If you don't have one, you will be amazed at how much in depth you can learn about God's word. Anyway, so Romans chapter 9 talks about God's sovereign choice here. It talks about Israel's past, present, and future. And we're going down here to... Uh, chapter 9 verse 15 and it says here for he says to Moses I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion so God has mercy and compassion on who he chooses okay now the reference to that scripture is in Exodus chapter 33 verse 19 see where it says it says Romans chapter 9 verse 15 the cross reference is Exodus chapter 33 verse 19 so when we turn to Exodus chapter 33 verse 19 it gives more in depth support to that scripture and it says here again in chapter 33 Exodus verse 19 it says and the Lord said I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name the Lord in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. 
Okay, and this is like, you know, it's about the story of Moses. Chapter 33, verses 12 through 23 is about Moses and the glory of the Lord. Okay, when Moses said to the Lord, you have been telling me, lead these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. You have said, I know you by name, and you have found favor with me. So God knows every one of us by name, and he chooses to who he wants to find favor in. Okay, just like he chose Moses. And Moses didn't think it made sense that he was the one that was being chosen. But he says here in chapter 3, Exodus, uh, verse 13, Moses said to God, if you are pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Okay, so that's what we have to do even when it doesn't make sense. God, teach me. God, teach me so that I may continue to find favor with you. Because I'm talking to the people who, who believe Christ, who love Christ, who are worshiping Christ, living their life in Christ, and things happen, trials and tribulations, that doesn't make sense. There's a lot of things about God that are hard to understand. And this is one of those things where God picks and chooses among people, okay? He picks, he, sometimes he picks people who have committed some of the most outrageous sins. And he chooses those people to be leaders. So we, we can't understand why things happen or why God picks and chooses who he does. But he does what he does, what he does, what he does when he wants to. When we are seeking God's will and we are laying ourselves before him and we're asking him, Lord, you know, remove this person from my life. Remove this from my life. Lord, why is this happening to me? God, can you take this away? Whatever is hindering me from being your servant, take it away, Lord. But then it seems like when we ask him to do that, the issue comes even more so, or it grows, or it gets bigger, and it just seems like our lives turn upside down when we're in the midst of serving God, when we're doing all we can do as a Christian, but then we have hardships that come upon us. We have illnesses that come upon us. We have people who betray us and hurt us and we have, you know, trials and tribulations and we're like, this is not making any sense. Why isn't God protecting me from this disaster? Why isn't he stopping this from happening? Why isn't he, you know, blocking this from going on in my life? This is not making sense. Why doesn't he rain down his blessings on me? And you may, be, you may feel like, I've been obedient, God. I've been in your word. I've been seeking your face. Why am I still lonely? Why do I not have the income I want? Why do I not have transportation? Why do I not have yet a child? Why do I not have yet a wife or a husband? I've been seeking your face, Lord. I've been obedient. And you just think this is just not making any sense. Well, when you think like that and you get to that point, a frustration in the midst of trials and tribulations or when you're in the chapter of your season that's not making sense I want you to think about Noah God blessed him right Noah there's so many great stories in the Bible that we can learn from so Noah you know throughout the Bible God chooses some people over others to allow things to happen for them to go through trials and tribulations and situations that just doesn't make sense he shows his mercy on whom he chooses to show his mercy on and he also has compassion on whom he chooses to have compassion on but with Noah he chose Noah sometimes it makes sense to us sometimes it doesn't Noah was chosen because God saw what others didn't see God saw that he was righteous Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 and I mean chapter 7 verse 1 when you think about it that way you, you're probably thinking okay well that makes sense that he would choose Noah because he's righteous right Genesis chapter 7 and I'm going somewhere with this just stay with me Genesis chapter 7 verse 1 it says the Lord then said to Noah go into the ark you and your whole family because I have found you righteous 
and this generation. And remember, he chose Moses because he found favor in Moses. And so back to Noah, you know, we look at the cross reference here. And the cross reference takes us to Genesis chapter 7, verse 5. And that scripture says, and Noah did all that the Lord commanded him. Okay, that's the reason why, because God knew he was going to follow his commands. And then another scripture says, uh, the cross reference is chapter 6, verse 22. Chapter 6, I'm sorry, it says, yeah, chapter 6, verse 22, and it says, Noah was a righteous man. Well, this is uh, verse 9. Verse 9. Chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. Okay, so he was chosen. Okay, so it makes sense. He was righteous. He walked with God. He followed his commands, right? But what about the people who are chosen who are not doing those things? It might not make sense to you, but it makes sense to God. Okay, so throughout the Bible, God chooses some people over others. And sometimes it makes sense to us and sometimes it doesn't. When we start to think about it, we can remember a lot more examples of things in the Bible that sometimes doesn't make sense when it comes to people getting what we feel we might deserve or when it comes to people getting what we feel they might deserve or vice versa. You see what I'm saying? Why did God choose Jacob, for example, over Esau? Who knows about that story? Jacob and Esau. Jacob was the younger brother. Esau was the older brother. Jacob lied to trick his father into blessing him. So that doesn't make sense. Why does he get the blessings when he lied and tricked his father? Okay, because again, Romans chapter 9, verse 15, like God said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Let's go to that story. Genesis chapter 27, verse 19. It's a really, really good story. Um, you know, the Bible is full of great stories that we can learn from. And if you're not a big reader, I strongly suggest audio reading the Bible. You can just, you can find it easily on YouTube. You can go to Genesis chapter 27, audio read on YouTube. And just chill and listen to the Bible read itself to you. Okay, so, but Genesis chapter 27, verse 19, it says here, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat some of the game, which is meat, so that you may give me your blessing. Okay, and the cross reference takes you up to verse four. And it says in verse four, the father had told the father had told Esau, prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me so that I may give you my blessing before I die. To make a long story short, Rebecca, the mother of Esau, the older brother and Jacob, the younger brother, she heard what the father told the older son. Actually, instead of making a long story short, I'll just read the story quickly. It's about Jacob getting Isaac's blessing. Isaac is his father. So this is it's not making sense, right? It's not making sense, but it's happening. And I'm going somewhere with this, okay? And it's going to help you kind of like lean not to your own understanding when things in life is just not making sense. All right? So Genesis chapter 27, I'm going to read verse 1, and I'm going to read it through... Just listen, okay? Because it's going to be a cool story. You're going to learn from it. So when Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could no longer see, he called for Esau, his older son, and said to him, My son, here I am, he answered. Isaac said, I am now an old man and don't know the day of my death. Now then, get your weapons, your quiver and bow, and go out to the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare me the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me to eat so that I may give you my blessings before I die. Now, Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. 
And Rebecca is the mother of these sons, remember? Okay, so verse 5. Now Rebecca was listening as Isaac spoke to his son Esau. When Esau left for the open country to hunt game and bring it back, Rebecca said to her son Jacob, which is the younger son, okay? This is when, you know, Esau had sold his birthright to Jacob. And that's, that's the part of the story before this part. So if you really want to hear about it, you just got to go to Genesis and audio read. Okay. It's great stories, but we're, we're talking about this blessing part. Okay. It just doesn't make sense, but over time it all does make sense. So, so Rebecca said, look to Jacob. She said, look to, this is her younger son. She said, um, in verse six, Rebecca said to her son, Jacob, look, I overheard your father say to your brother Esau, bring me some game and prepare me some tasty food to eat so that I may give you my blessings in the presence of the Lord before I die. Now, my son, listen carefully and do what I tell you. Go out to the flock and bring me two choice young goats so I can prepare some tasty food for your father just the way he likes it. Then take it to your father to eat so that he may give you his blessings before he dies. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I'm a man with smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, My son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother, and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. Then she handed to her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread she made. He went to his father, and he said, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Please sit up and eat of my game so that you may give me your blessings. Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? Because you all remember he told his older son Esau, go, to the, go out in the country and hunt for some game to prepare for me to eat so I can bless you. But the mother had Jacob to quickly do it and she cooked it just the way he likes it because they're tricking the father for the younger son to get the blessing. So the Lord your God gave me success, he replied to his dad, because his father Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? And he said, the Lord your God gave me success, he replied. In chapter 27, Genesis verse 21, then Isaac said to Jacob, come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you really are my son Esau or not. And Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, he said, the voice of Jacob, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Because remember, the mother put the goat skin on the smooth younger son's arms. And so if the dad reached out to touch him, he would think he's a hairy guy like the older son. And she put Esau's clothes on him. So again, Genesis chapter 27, verse 23, he did not recognize him for his hands were hairy like those of the brother Esau. So the father Isaac, he blessed him. He said, are you really my son Esau? Verse 24, he asked. And he said, I am, Jacob replied. And then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he ate and he brought some wine and he drank. Then his father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went to him and kissed him. And when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him. Because remember, the mom put the older son's clothes from the country on the younger son. So the father who was going blind from old age really thought that the younger son was the older son. They tricked him to get a blessing. So um, the father's blessing, Isaac blessed Jacob and he said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field from that the Lord has blessed. And here's the blessing. He said, May God give you of heaven's dew and of earth's richness, an abundance of grain and new wine. May nations serve you and peoples bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, 
and those who bless you be blessed. Wow. And so, I mean, that blessing alone, you can kind of take that and use that in your own life too. You know what I mean? You can use some of the blessings from the Bible and even put them in prayers where you can say, God, those who curse me, curse them. Those who bless me, bless them. But then again, God wants us to love our enemies and we'll let the vengeance be God's vengeance up to him. So, so anyway, um, chapter 27, verse 30 it, the story goes, after Isaac finished blessing him and Jacob had scarcely left his father's presence, his brother Esau came in from hunting, and he too prepared some tasty food and brought it to his father. Then he said to him, My father, sit up and eat some of my game so that you may give me your blessings. And his father Isaac asked him, Who are you? And Isaac trembled violently and said, Who was it then that hunted game and brought it to me? I ate it just before you came, and I blessed him. And indeed, he will be blessed. So when Esau heard his father's words, he burst out with a loud and bitter cry. He said to his father, Bless me. Me too, my father. Verse 35. But he said, Your brother came deceitfully and took your blessings. And Esau said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? He has deceived me these two times. He took my birthright and now he's taken my blessings. Then he asked, haven't you reserved any blessings for me? And Isaac answered Esau, I have made him Lord over you and have made all of his relatives his servants. And I have sustained him with grain and new wine. So what can I possibly do for you, my son? So Esau said to his father, Do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me too, my father. Then Esau wept aloud. And, you know, unfortunately, his father Isaac answered him. He said, Your dwelling will be away from the earth's richness, away from the dew of heavens above. You will live by the sword. You will serve your brother. But when you grow restless, you will throw his yoke from off your neck. Okay, and then again, Genesis chapter 27, verse 41, it talks about how Jacob then flees to Laban because he realizes how angry his brother is because his baby brother got his blessing. So Esau, the older brother, held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessings of his father that had given him. And he said to himself, the days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. So when Rebecca, the mother, heard her older son saying how he wants to kill his younger son, his younger brother, Rebecca told her, her older son, Esau, had she, she heard what he said. So she went to Jacob and said, your brother Esau is consoling himself with the thought of killing you. So they told him to go to a different city, Laban and Haran, to stay with his uncle until the older brother's fury calmed down. Okay, so it's a, it's a really like nice story that you could read, you could learn from it. But the point is, although Jacob got the blessing he wanted, deceiving his father cost him dearly. There's consequences for sin, okay? Um, and even though he got the blessing, the consequences for his deceit is that he never saw his mother again. His brother wanted to kill him. He was deceived by his uncle in Laban in the city he fled to. His family became torn by strife. Esau became the founder of an enemy nation. He was exiled from his family for years. And ironically, Jacob would have received the birthright and blessings anyway. So bringing this story back to our own life when things don't make sense, Imagine how different life would be if we just obey God and trust in God and not our own understanding when things don't make sense. Because a lot of times when things don't make sense, we try to fix it and we do whatever it is deceptive, whatever it is under the table, whatever it is we can do to try to fix it ourselves instead of taking it to God in prayer and leaning not on our own understanding but on His understanding. And when we do that, things work out in, for the good when we lean on God for understanding. So, things don't make sense. You see what I mean? They don't sometimes make sense. And when Jacob lied to trick his father into blessing him, 
it just didn't make sense to Esau. And some of the things of the consequences didn't make sense to Jacob. So, now we know about Jacob and Esau. Another story in the Bible I want to mention is you know about Job. Some of you may know about Job, some of you may not. But that's another story in the Bible where he went through many months of suffering for God to prove a point to Satan. Satan is horrible. And some may think, well, why would God waste his time proving something to Satan? That doesn't make sense. But it happens. You know, and another thing, the Israelites. The Israelites, uh, they were tired. It's another story in the Bible about the Israelites, how they were tired of wandering in the wilderness. They were tired of manna bread. They had manna bread this and manna burgers. Just think about it. If you had to eat the same food in the wilderness every day, all day, manna bread, manna burgers, manna cereal, manna steak, manna puddings, manna casserole, wouldn't you have been tired of eating the same food too? Uh, but these people that God rescued from slavery in Egypt, they started complaining about the food that God gave them. He gave them manna to eat. They mumbled and grumbled. So God actually sent fairy, he sent snakes to bite them. He sent snakes to bite them and they died. And it didn't make sense. So we turn here to Numbers. We turn to Numbers. And in Numbers, it talks about the story of that, just that. Numbers chapter 21, and that was the first time I ever heard that about the snakes. He sent the snakes to bite them who were complaining about it doesn't make sense why they have to eat manna all the time. So Numbers in chapter 21, verse 4 through 6, it talks about the bronze snake. It says, they have traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the desert? There is no bread. There is no water. And we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them, and they bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, we sinned. We spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And here's what the Lord did. And I have audio read prior to reading the Bible. And I don't even remember hearing about this. So I was really like blown away with this story. But it says the Lord, it says in uh, Numbers 21 verse 8, the Lord said to Moses, Make a snake and put it up on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, he lived. It didn't make sense to the people why Moses was putting a bronze snake on a pole, but God had life in what didn't make sense. There was life and healing and restoration in the midst of what didn't make sense. You see how that is? Some of you probably are lost in this Bible study thinking this Bible study doesn't make sense, but it really does. It makes sense, you know, and it's, it's the people were complaining and they were complaining that it didn't make sense. They became frustrated, as we do too. We may become frustrated when we're going through the valley, when we're going through the wilderness, when we're going through trials and tribulations, when things are happening to us and we don't understand it doesn't make sense. Romans chapter 9, verse 18 through 21. Romans chapter 9, verse 18 through 21 says... Therefore God has mercy. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. 
one of you will say to me, then why does God still blame us for who resist his will? But who are you, O oh man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, why did you make me like this? Does not potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble purposes and some for common use? So you have bowls, right? You have bowls in your kitchen. Some bowls are meant to bring out and display on the table for dining or entertaining. And the other bowls are meant for mixing and preparing food. That's what God is trying to say. Not everyone is going to be chosen. Not everyone is going to have the same trials. Not every trial is going to make sense. And in verse 25, chapter 9, Romans, he says, I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. In other words, again, Romans chapter 9, verse 15, like he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Who are you to question me of why this is happening to you? This actually brings me back to a Bible study I did months ago, and it was about why God, why? I will link that Bible study to the end of this Bible study as a suggestion for you to view and listen to. But yeah, he has mercy on whom he will have mercy on, and he will harden who he wants to harden. So when you stop and think about it, God knows exactly what he is doing. When the Israelites, for example, when they were in the wilderness complaining about the manna and grumbling, what if the grumblers got other people to start grumbling. You see what I'm saying? What if they all decided to go back to Egypt just because they felt like something didn't make sense? Just because they wanted to follow the crowd of, well, I don't want to, I want to stop serving God. I'm going to just backslide because none of this makes sense. When you compare your life to other people's life, you probably will question, well, why have some of these things happened to me? You know, you don't want to grumble like the sinners. When we are in Christ, we have to not lean to our own understanding, but lean to God and trust wholeheartedly. Our, every detail of our life, we have to trust. Even in the bad times, we have to trust in God. When we compare our life to other people, we might see where we've had some really awful things happen to us. We might ask, well, why do they have a husband and I don't? Why do they have a wife and I don't? Well, why are they living this way and I'm not? We might think there's some unfair situations happening in our life that doesn't make sense. We might feel like, well, why did this happen? And some of us might feel the more we try to be in God's will, the more things keep happening. So some may get so frustrated to the point they feel, should I give up and walk away from God? Because sometimes we may feel like we're going crazy. And on the other hand, we may feel like, well, I feel like I want to go crazy, but I'm not going crazy. Why haven't I gone crazy with all of this that I'm experiencing and going through? There's a number of people who are amazed that they haven't, they haven't been taken out by their problems and their trials and tribulations and things that don't make sense. Why is life so difficult? Some Christians are actually asking themselves that. But it's because you haven't gone crazy, you haven't lost it, you haven't backslid, you haven't given up because God is sustaining you. You are the clay and he is the potter. And when, if you look at somebody who is forming and shaping clay, it doesn't make sense. It looks like a mess. You can't even tell what they're trying to shape in the clay. But the finished work looks really nice. It looks well done. It looks like it was all worth it, you know? It is worth trusting God. Because when he finishes conditioning you in the things that don't make sense in your life, you will look back and see, you know what? God. Because of God. But God is a reason why 
you your illness hasn't taken you out. God is the reason why you haven't gotten into a bad marriage with someone who could have possibly taken you out. Everything happens for a reason and always know that. And it might not even be your season on why things are happening. But God is sustaining you. Even if you can't see any good coming out of the things that doesn't make sense. Even when you can't see any good coming out of the trials. You must have faith that he knows what he is doing. His timing is perfect timing. Some of the trials are to make us stronger. To help us help others. And sometimes we, the results of what we're going through that doesn't make sense, we can't even see the results. We can't even see the results. For example, Job in the Bible, the story of Job. Did Job know why God allowed all the sorrows to be heaped on him? The Bible doesn't say he knows. I doubt if he did. So let me encourage you with this scripture, okay? Let me encourage you with this scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 through 5. You know, it, it reminds me of when, uh, in Genesis, when Moses wanted to see God's face. And he said, I will cover you with my hand so that you cannot see my face. Here, before I go to 2 Corinthians to encourage you, let me go back to Genesis. And it was when Moses wanted to see God's face. See if I can find it. And God didn't want him to see his face. Here it is. Moses and the glory of God. Moses wanted to see God's face because he was feeling like him being chosen to lead all these people was not making sense. And the Lord says here in Exodus, okay, not Genesis, but Exodus chapter 33, verse 19. It says, and the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Okay, then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. Now, when I read that, I was thinking, there's a place near me you can stand on a rock. Who's near God? Jesus. He's at the right-hand side of God. Who is your rock? Jesus is my rock. So that's how I took that scripture. You know what I mean? And we can't see God until we are born again, until we are in spirit, because God is spirit. And so... We have to die to the flesh, literally, when he was saying, you know, no one may see me and live. All right. But he sent Jesus so that we may live and have eternal life. So anyway, uh, in chapter 33, verse 22, he says, when my glory passes by, because remember the Lord said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Verse 21, he says, then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. Listen, we are not to understand everything that's happening to us in our life, especially when we are serving the Lord. Okay? Some things are not to be seen. Some things are not to be understood. God will prevent you from understanding. He will prevent you from seeing the why. And he will turn you to asking and seeing the how. How things happen in your life that doesn't make sense that will lead to glorifying of the Lord. Okay? And that's why I said I'm going to put my Why God, Why Bible study at the end suggestion video uh, for you to check out because it could be like, you know, linked to this Bible study of why things don't make sense. 
He says, when my glory passes, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. I felt like he's going to put you in the rock of Jesus, Jesus within you, you and Jesus, and cover you with the blood of Christ. When things don't make sense, just know that you will be sustained. Just know that God will be covering you. He will put your hand, some things you're not supposed to see. That's why he told them, uh, don't look back when he was getting ready to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And those trials and tribulations was happening. He told them, don't look back. Some things we're not supposed to understand why they're not making sense. Okay, I'm coming to a conclusion. I just wanted to talk about the Moses and how, you know, God put his hand over Moses so that he couldn't see. He couldn't see. Okay, so we don't see all the reasons of why some things happen to us and why it doesn't make sense. But let me encourage you with this scripture. It's 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. And we're coming to a conclusion. But it's about the, go the God of all comfort, okay? The God of all comfort. And it says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the suffering of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. Okay, so verse four, again, it says who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in our troubles. God will comfort us and help us through our trials and tribulations. He will help us through what doesn't make sense when we lean on him. At the very least, we will be able to have the strength to comfort others. Have you ever been able to minister to someone by saying, I've been there before. I've been there myself. I've gone through what you've gone through. I understand how you're feeling. Sometimes that is the only way that someone will listen to you. When they feel like you've gone through what they've gone through. You've experienced what they're experiencing. Well, let me tell you, Jesus suffered. Jesus suffered. So why shouldn't we think we shouldn't suffer? So now we'll understand what Jesus went through too. We can relate because Jesus suffered. We're going to have trials and tribulations too. Now, I do want to read a quick reference here, cross reference here. For 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3, the cross reference is Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. So let's turn to Ephesians. Well, let's go to 1 Peter first. They have 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, 2. So let's read that one first. 1 Peter, and we're coming to a conclusion. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And it says, again, it's talking about praise to our God for a living hope. Praise God. In him you can have hope when things don't make sense. God has great blessings to his people. Look at that. God's great blessings to his people. And uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus is our rock that we are to stand on, okay, in times that don't make sense. And then we have reference Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and it talks about unity in Christ it talks about spiritual blessings in Christ the cross reference again it says chapter 1 Ephesians verse 1 uh, verse 3 it says praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ for he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight 
and love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. So when the trials get heavy, when things doesn't make sense of why they're happening to you or why they happen to you, remember that God will keep you from being crushed completely flat. He will keep you from being completely broken. When you look back, you will see his hand was holding you up. And the last scripture, I have a new friend who is a pastor. And he told me that his favorite scripture is Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. So when I was doing this Bible study, I thought that, you know what? When things don't make sense, that scripture is perfect to conclude this Bible study on. So shout out to you, Pastor uh, Kirkwood. <laughs> and it's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. Okay, and it says here, when things don't make sense, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. All right, did you hear that? Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5 through 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, not only when the times are good, not only during the times when you're feeling happy, but the times when you're feeling sad, when you're in the times where you're like, God, why is this happening to me? This is not making sense. That's when you really got to trust in him with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make it make sense. <laughs> he will make your path straight. Because let me tell you, leaning, and we're coming to a conclusion, I promise. <laughs> leaning has the sense of putting your whole weight on something. Resting on and trusting in that person or thing. When we have an important decision to make, or when we're going through something that doesn't make sense, we sometimes feel that we can't trust anymore. We can't trust anyone. We might, not, we might not even fail trusting in God. But God knows better than we know what is best for us. He is a better judge of what we want and need than we are. So when things don't make sense, we must trust him completely in every choice we make. We should not omit careful thinking or belittle our God-given ability to reason but we should not trust our own ideas to the exclusion of all others. We must not be wise in our own eyes. We should always be willing to listen to and be corrected by God's word and wise counselors when things don't make sense. So I encourage you to bring your decisions, your requests, your confusion, your, your prayers to God in prayer. Use the Bible as your guide and then follow God's leading. He will make your path straight by both guiding you, protecting you, sustaining you, and eventually what didn't make sense will make sense. That concludes our Bible study. I pray that you grow in grace and peace as you fully understand what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. I pray that God bless you. I pray God protect you. I pray that he calls you and draws you. And in conclusion, God, thank you for this time. Thank you for the opportunity for me to share my faith. Thank you for the bread of life, your word. Holy Spirit, thank you for leading us into truths. Jesus, thank you for dying for us. Father, teach us how you want us to apply your word to our daily life. 
And Lord, keep us from drifting away from your word. Thank you, God, for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Please like this video. Share this video. Don't forget to check out the other suggestion videos at the end. And subscribe to my channel, Apple Tree. Stay with me on this spiritual journey. And if you need prayer, you can leave a prayer request down below in the comment section. But either way, again, I will pray for you that God protect you, bless you, call and draw you, and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.